So normally I make these collection overview videos every year or so, where I do a tour of my whole collection. This time, however, I wanted to try something different and make a top 5 list instead. In this part 1, I'll rank the model cars of my collection that I like the most. I'll try to explain as well why I chose that particular model. The order doesn't necessarily reflect the quality of that model car itself, but also the feeling that it gives me when looking at it or the story behind it. So sit back and relax and enjoy the top 5 of my collection. So let's start out with number 5 in the list and in 5th place is the Minichamps Tyrrell Ford 012 as driven by Stefan Belov at the 1984 Monaco Grand Prix. Minichamps have done a bunch of pretty good 1980s F1 models and this Tyrrell here is no exception. Other examples are the older BMW related models like the 83 Brabham or the 86 Benetton. The Senna Tolmans for instance are also very good as are the 82 and 83 and 86 and 87 Williams cars. And I did a review of the Mansell 87 Williams FW11B a few months ago. You can check it out right here on my channel. So this Tyrrell Dust is in great company, but for me it stands out even more than these other models that I mentioned. First of all, Minichamps have done a really good job on this model car. They have made several different versions in all kinds of liveries and they all look great I think, but for me this one really stands out. The black livery with the German flag matches the great looking helmet Stefan used and these colorful sponsorship logos really make it pop. Funnily enough, his teammate Brendel's car had a completely different livery that weekend. Back then teams could run different liveries for their cars and Stefan actually also ran in Martin's car in one of the practice sessions and of course there's also a model of that. So not only is the livery very good but also the model itself. It's pretty nicely detailed and the half open engine bay looks great I think. There are plenty of finer parts visible and the level of finishing is quite remarkable for an off the shelf model. I mean this model really shows what minichamps can do if they really try. I also like the level of research they went through for this model car. The figurine is a prime example of that. Here you see on this model the suit of the figurine is pretty plain. There are no sponsorship logos anywhere to be seen. If you look up pictures of Bella from that weekend, you'll notice that the race suit he wears is actually completely different. Even when he ran Brundle's car, as I mentioned before, he wears a different suit and the model of that particular moment has that white and blue suit too. So why is the race version of the model so wrong then? Well, it's not wrong. It's actually pretty darn accurate and so cool they noticed this detail and put it on the model. The 1984 Monaco Grand Prix was famously very wet, so wet even that race director Jackie X deemed it too dangerous to continue and flagged off the race after just 31 laps. This to the ire of a young Ayrton Senna who was convinced he would have won the race if it had ran its full length. This however is debatable as Belov was actually going around even faster than Senna and could have caught the Brazilian as well. In the end, Prost won, with Senna second and Belov third, his only podium finish in his short F1 career. Later on he was even stripped of the result when it transpired his Tyrrell team ran their cars under weight that season and all of their results got scrapped. But coming back to the topic of the race suit, so the race was very wet, with his massively open cockpits, especially compared to nowadays standards, the drivers too got very wet. So for these conditions, Belov chose to wear some kind of waterproof sports jacket. And this is so cool, many champs have noticed this, as it would be very easy just to assume he would have worn his regular overalls. Another nice detail on the figurine is the helmet. I'll admit, it doesn't look very special, so why am I mentioning it here? Well, I always assumed Belov ran his GPA helmet that race. He did in fact use it during the weekend, but for the race he switched to the Kiwi brand. Since I thought he ran the GPA helmet, I always wanted to search for a replacement one, more akin to the GPA. In fact, rival brand Spark has made a 118 GPA helmet of Belov to match his uh, Porsche 956 Nordschleife record car. So I bought that one and it actually matches the helmet Stefan wore in uh, Monaco. So I wanted to swap this uh, Spark GPA one for the one on the model until I noticed the one on the Mini Chance model is actually based off a Kiwi helmet and therefore the more correct one. Shame the helmet is not as detailed as the Spark GPA I have here, but at least it's accurate. You see, it's not always good to try and look for better things. 
So yeah, that's why I chose this Minichamps Tyrol model of Stefan Belov as the number 5 in my collection. In 4th place then I have picked another Tyrol Ford model, but this time by Exoto. It is the P34 six-wheeler of Jody Schechter from the 1976 Swedish Grand Prix, the car's only win. It of course needs no introduction, this six-wheeler. Exoto 2 is known for the extremely finely detailed model cars, so no need to explain that either. If you want to see an in-depth review of this model car, I have made one about a year ago, so you can go and check that one out on the channel as well. The things that have done it for me is of course the very cool backstory, and the fact that this is such an iconic and different looking race car. But the level of detail on this model is really impressive too. Not only is the open engine bay really something to behold, but also the details on the wheels like um, the small tire valve in it, uh, the figurine as well with the hand painted helmet, the visor that can be opened with a pretty real looking face I think, the typical necker on the bottom of the helmet as well, the life support tube connected to it, the detailed suit as well and these uh, fine hand details up to the fingers, I mean it's all really amazing. If you didn't realize this model was also made in 1997, so about 26 years ago now, it makes it even more impressive. Well, maybe you don't know, but back then model cars were not as detailed as they are today. Just go and look for a mini chance model from, let's say, 96 season. They were most likely released in 97. And they actually look good, but nowhere near as detailed as this model right here. I mean, Spark didn't even exist back then, and CMC were in their infancy, and their models were no comparison to the level of these Exotos. Model cars like this Exoto Teal here were not only very detailed and accurate, but they were race-specific versions as well. Nowadays it's pretty normal to base your model on a particular race, but back then model makers just made one generic version of that season's car, and that was it. It of course also helped a bit that the cars didn't change too much during the season too. So for those reasons, I'll go with this uh, Teal P34 in number 4. So after choosing a number 4 car in 5th position and a number 3 car in 4th, the next one will be a number 5 car in 3rd. So in 3rd place then is the BBR Ferrari SF70H model, the Monaco Grand Prix winner of 2017 as driven by Sebastian Vettel. So a number 5 car in number 3 as I said. This model for me is pretty much the perfect modern F1 model car. I think BBR has done a terrific job on it. It was their second release in a joint venture with Minichamps, and this was a great way for Minichamps to be able to produce Ferrari F1 models again, since BBR was holding the license. BBR then in turn made sure the models were up to their standards, and the collaboration produced beauties like this one here. So the model is packed with some great details. The body panel lines and rivets, for instance, look excellent. They are visible but not too pronounced and give the model a more realistic look. The wheels too are something different. They were the first to have these textured sidewalls with all these uh, lines and lettering embossed in it just like in real life. The wheels too are excellent with a small yellow tire valve in it. The floor then has these cuts in it in front of the rear wheels. In the rear wing end plates too, all the gills are cut out. The upper flap of the wing even moves, mimicking the DRS function. Although that is a bit of a gimmick, it does mean that the two wing flaps are separate elements. The cockpit details then are the best I've ever seen on a modern 118 diecast F1 model. The helmet is very good with the uh, race specific livery. It also has a special wing on the back which Sebastian always used in his Ferrari days. You have the impression of a xylon panel on the visor too, and the see-through chin gurney is really mighty impressive. The belt details are amazing too then. Those are real belts with fine photo etched buckle pieces, and the belts themselves are a bit textured as well and look very good. The hand sticking out then is, well, not perfect I'll admit, but the decals on the glove are crisp and clear. The steering wheel then is simply stunning. I mean, you could take it out of the model and display it on its own, it's that detailed. The structure then behind the wheel is even more impressive. On most models it's just a blocked off piece, and here you can see the attachments of the steering column and the foam used for the driver's legs underneath. No other model maker has added this level of detail to the cockpits anymore, not even BBR themselves. 
Granted, now with the Halo, you can't really clearly see into the cockpit anymore, but it's a shame BBR have seemingly given up on detailing their models like this one. I mean, it's not all perfect though as well. The front wing cascades don't have cuts in them. And the same goes for these uh, bargeboard side elements. The visor of the otherwise great helmet is pretty bad too, with the uh, Minichamp's influence shining through here with the brown visor they used to use. But yeah, all in all, these are just minor blips on an otherwise excellent model car. And as I said, this BBR version of Gina here is the best modern F1 car there is on the market, I think. Change my mind in the comments down below. Coming in at number 2 then is yet another Exoto model, and it's another Ferrari. I mean, so far I've only chosen Ferrari or Tyrrell models it seems, but yeah, I mean, sue me, don't sue me. But anyways, uh, this is the Ferrari 312 T4 of Gilles Villeneuve. It is the South African Grand Prix version from the Villeneuve Lada gift set. I have already done a review of this model here on the channel, so be sure to check that one out as well. I summarized the model back then as it's a Ferrari, it's a Villeneuve model and it's an Exoto, what's not to like? And for sure these are all good points. The Ferrari and Villeneuve parts of it are based on feelings of course, but the Exoto part is just facts. The detail on this model is just exquisite, it's even better than the Tyrrell P34. If the BBR Ferrari SF70H model was pretty much the perfect modern F1 model car, then this for sure is the perfect classic F1 model. What really helps on this model is that the whole top part of the chassis comes off to reveal the astounding details on the inside. The engine bay is incredibly intricate and packed with so much details you don't know where to look at first. The flat 12 boxer engine looks amazing as does the rear of the car with the gearbox, suspension and the onboard brakes. And even the underside of the model is detailed with the uh, exhaust spaghetti let's say and the aluminium undertray and of course these ground effect tunnels. The big radiators in the side pods are very nice too with this uh, photo etched mesh. The figurine then is another piece of modeling art I think. This one is completely exposed and that's great if it looks like, well it does here as good as this one. The belt details are again pretty much perfect with fabric belts and fine metallic buckle pieces. The hand painted suit looks great too as do the hands of the figurine resting on the steering wheel. The feet then are visible too inside the pedal box and just look amazing. The cockpit details too are stunning with the dashboard, steering wheel and gear stick lever all very finely replicated. The underside of the body cover then even has this uh, satisfying powder coated layer and the white cockpit side panels just fit perfectly next to the figurine. The only downside on this model is the helmet. Well, it actually looks very good with again an opening visor and a very detailed hand painted face and shape-wise it's good too, as it really looks like a GPA helmet. The only thing is, at the South African Grand Prix, Gilles still had his bell helmet and not yet his GPA one, so even though this hand-painted helmet is simply gorgeous, it's not 100% accurate. Aside from all this, the main reason it's so high up the list too is because I've wanted to have this Ferrari Exoto model from the first moment I saw them in the shops as a kid. I had never seen model cars as detailed as this one before, and never had I dreamed that I could one day afford me one. I still remember buying the Villeneuve USA Grand Prix West version with the rain tires and umbrella with my first paycheck and I couldn't believe I paid so much money for it, around 175 euro I think back then, but when it arrived I never even regretted it. The reasons why this model here is not the same as the USA Grand Prix West version is uh, mentioned in the review video of this model, so if you want to know why, then check out that video later on. So we've had some stunning model cars up until now I think, from the Minichance Bell of 1984 Tyrrell to the Exoto Tyrrell P34, the BBR Vettel Ferrari SF70H to this Gilles Villeneuve 1979 Exoto Ferrari, and before I reveal the number one of my collection, I'd like to quickly mention those following models that I considered for the list but just didn't make it. In no particular order, there is the CMC Lancia Ferrari D50 from the 1956 Italian Grand Prix. This is a car that was shared by both Peter Collins and that year's world champion Juan Manuel Fangio during that race. It's a stunning model by CMC with heaps of fine details. It even comes with a special starter motor. 
and I'll probably still do a review of this model, so if you want to know more, you'll have to wait for the video of it. Another one is a non-F1 car, and it is the Mini Chance Porsche 956 of uh, Jackie X and Derek Bell, the Le Mans 1982 winners. This model features opening doors and a removable engine cover. And aside from the fact that it's a model of a beautiful iconic car and the details are not too bad either, it's also a car driven by one of my motorsports heroes, Jackie X. It's also been signed by him at the 2021 Brussels Interclassics, which makes it even more special to me. But unfortunately, it just fell out of the top 5, but it still gets a well-deserved mention here then. Another Le Mans model is the Spark Nissan Delta Wing from 2012. After the TLP 34, this is another weird race car in the list. I kinda like cars that are a bit out of the ordinary and this one just fits the bill perfectly. I don't think they get any weirder than this. Spark always does an amazing job on their Le Mans models, it has to be said. They made uh, sports cars models before they ventured into F1 and you can tell their Le Mans cars are always top notch and are even better than the F1 models in my opinion. This Exoto model then kinda fits that bill too. It is the Jackie Stewart Tyrrell 003 from the 1971 Monaco Grand Prix. It's again a quality metal car by Exoto with all the details you can expect from the brand. The open engine bay shows some impressive details here too. And the figurine is again pure quality. The dynamic pose is really nice as if he's turning into the iconic Monaco hairpin. I did add a yellow tint to the visor to make it even more authentic I think. The weird part of the model is of course that nose with its blade wings and it houses a big radiator underneath and that photo etched uh, mesh grille looks awesome as well I think. Now it would have merited a place in the top 5 but for the even more special P34 Tyrrell so it'll have to make you by getting a mention here. Finally then the last model that just fell out of the top 5 is the Toyota GT1 by AutoArt. In fact, I have two models of that car, the 1998 version and the 99. These are basically the same car, but actually they are still a bit different as well. And some parts of the car had evolved, of course, and it's reflected as well on the model car. Not only that, but the model itself has undergone some changes and not all for the good. One example of it are the brake discs. They are metal for the 1998 model, but the 99 seems to have plastic ones. The model is everything you can expect from an auto art of the time. The opening parts are great. You can see inside the cockpit and the engine bay. It's not insanely detailed, but it's still very good, I think. I always love the look of this car and therefore it gets a mention here. If it were more detailed, then it would have gotten a place in the top 5. And now for the Moment Supreme. In first place, the best model car of my collection, it is the... Exoto Ferrari 641-2. This version is the 1990 Alain Prost Japanese Grand Prix one with the timing monitor on the cockpit. So now it's a number one model at number one, which is quite fitting, no? I know I'm not being very original with my selection with all these Exoto models and only Tyrrells and Ferraris, but I can't help the Exoto models are such beauties and that they concentrated heavily on those themes. This model, however, is one of the prettiest I've ever come across. The real-life Ferrari 641-2 is a stunner, so it's no surprise the model is too. I really love that car. For me, it's the quintessential F1 car. I mean, if you would ask anyone to quickly draw an F1 car, they would basically draw this one. It's simple yet elegant aerodynamics, that scarlet Ferrari red with the black wings, the big slicks, the open cockpit. I could go on and on. Exoto really have done this car justice. The model is pretty much perfect. And it starts with the overlook, which they totally nailed. The exterior details are magnificent too. The wings all consist of separate elements, of course, and have a nice carbon texture in the plastic material. The cooling vents in the side pod look great. And all of these diesel fasteners are photo edge parts and look very detailed. I also like that the tobacco branding was uh, factory fitted. This is something that wouldn't be possible anymore today, I think. The shape of the floor then is also very cool, at a bit of an angle. And here too the carbon effect looks great. The wheels are very good too, with a small tire valve in the rim. You can also see through the spokes to the brake disc and the copper colored Brembo caliper. Looking at the back of the car, 
you can see the exhaust exiting the diffuser. Here too the body of the car opens up to reveal a very detailed engine bay. On top of the engine itself is a plastic yellow airbox. This is removable to show more of the engine, but that airbox is actually pretty cool itself. Usually they don't include that part on models that have opening parts, as it has to be thin enough to fit underneath the cover and not look out of scale. This means the engine cover also needs to be out of a thin material as well. The only lesser part is that it's in simple plain yellow and not a carbon yellow. The part itself is quite important though, as you can actually see a bit of the yellow then uh, through the holes of the roll hoop of the car. And um, it wouldn't look as realistic without it, I think. The engine then is all you could expect from an Exoto model. It's again very pretty and finely detailed up to the gearbox and rear suspension too. I also really like the chrome interior heat shielding underneath the engine. The cockpit then is also exposed and again shows some amazing details. The handcrafted figurine is very impressive with the very nice realistic seat belts. The hands are incredible too, especially the left one with all the fingers that are separately modeled. The hand painted helmet is maybe my favorite part on this small car. The shape looks great and the small radio cable attached to it is a nice little detail. The visor again can be opened. I did add this visor strip to it as it was normally a plain one. The most impressive part though is the driver's face. I mean, look at it. If that's not Alain Prost, then I don't know. It's got sad looking eyes Alain had and the uh, well, nose, the typical big crooked nose of Alain Prost is even replicated on the figurine. I mean, how incredible is that? The rest of the cockpit looks awesome too, with the Scadoni leather seat. The brake balance adjuster on the side of the cockpit with another velour leather patch on it and the FIA stickers on the other side. The dashboard then looks pretty clear too and the steering wheel of course has the pedal shifters which had been pioneered by Ferrari the year before. The shocks of the front suspension look pretty nice as well, especially those pushrod rockers. Finally then on this model the level of finishing even on the engine cover is excellent the underside again has a nice powder coated finish. The small headrest looks awesome again, again in Scadoni leather with the Cavallino Rampante on it. The small Olivetti monitor then looks amazing. The screen is very crisp and clear. The most amazing thing about the monitor however is that it's placed on the car at a small angle. You can see it's not on there straight. And this is not a mistake by Exoto, au contraire, it's actually the to counterbalance it, let's say. If you know the Suzuka pit straight, it's a downhill steep enough to uh, create big rivers whenever it rains there. So the cars are actually sitting at the same angle of the slope. So if you would recreate the Suzuka slope, you can see the monitor is actually on there straight. I mean, this is such an incredible piece of detail to get away the driver's face and all of the details of the engine bay that I simply had to pick this model as the ultimate number one of the collection. So yeah, that concludes this top five of my collection video. If you made it all the way through, congratulations. It was a much longer video than I had anticipated. Anyways, I hope you still enjoyed it. If you have any remarks about the things that I said, leave a comment down below. As always, like the video if you did enjoy watching it. Check out the other videos that I mentioned too and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so to help a fellow out. Thanks again for watching and see you soon for part two. I don't know, but yeah, in the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.